These are the first images taken by the European Space Agency's Euclid Space Telescope. Absolutely stunning imagery. So many galaxies in super fine, sharp details. It's just what's needed to make a 3D map of the universe. But what exactly are we seeing and what does it tell us? Hi, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, let's break down what exactly is in the Euclid test images. The Euclid Space Telescope is now at L2 and has just sent back these images. Recall that two scientific instruments occupy the mission. The Visible Instrument, or VIS for short, as the name suggests, it's looking at the universe in visible wavelengths. It's made up of 36 CCDs, which you can see here on the left, each square is a single CCD detector. This gives a total of over 600 megapixels resolution. On the right, you have a close-up of one image taken on one of the CCDs, and you can see chip gaps. But these can be removed by taking divot images. So in other words, you're moving the telescope a little bit at each point in the sky. Euclid will make four divot images. This will also take care of these bright streaks that are in the images. These bright streaks are cosmic rays, essentially they're high energy particles that we still don't know exactly where they originate from, but it's somewhere outside of our solar system. These saturate the pixels, but if you took a second image, it's unlikely another cosmic ray would hit exactly the same spot. Honestly, I was expecting so many more cosmic rays, and also I was expecting much stronger CTIs, or charge transfer inefficiencies. That's these smudges across the cosmic rays that are typically caused by the way the charge in each pixel is read out by moving it along the edge of the CCD before they get converted to a digital value. The movement of the charge isn't so efficient. Some charge will be left over at each step, and that's why it looks like a smudge, but we don't really see that in these images at all, which is really fantastic because they're a pain to remove. But then again, CTIs tend to get worse over time, especially with radiation damage, so maybe it's just very early days. Whilst talking about artifacts, I might as well mention the ghosts. Ghosts are these donut light features that are typically caused by optical reflections inside of the telescope from bright stars. Each donut here will have a corresponding star, and the shape resembles a primary and secondary mirror of the telescope. As with cosmic rays, you need to remember that these images are engineering images to test how well everything works. These artifacts will be removed from the science images, which will be divvied, stacked, and then fully processed, and we'll have these later on in the year. In the images, you can see some massive stars and even a star cluster. The stars are the most important thing in these images because they're what's needed to determine the quality of the galaxies and the image itself. You can see that the stars have spikes, but these aren't real. The stars aren't actually pointy, but this is the effect of the diffraction of the bright light inside of the telescope, in particular due to the presence of the three struts that support the secondary mirror. Each strut produces two diffraction spikes, but not all stars are spiky, only the brightest. Even though Euclid is most interested in galaxies, in these images the stars are most important. And the reason being is that the smaller the stars are, the better the quality of the image. Stars are meant to be point sources, they're supposed to look like a single point. But diffraction, optical alterations, thermal fluctuations, and other detector effects will smear out the point, and we won't be able to get good measurements of the galaxy's shapes if we don't correct it. So the stars essentially are used to calibrate out these distortions known as the point spread function, or PSF for short. From the test images, we can see that the PSF of Euclid is already holding up to expectations. The second instrument on Euclid is NISP, which stands for Near Infrared Spectrometer and Photometer. It takes two types of data. The photometry data are just like the VIS images. So again, we see all of the galaxies, the stars, and the similar artifacts. But this data are in infrared wavelengths, and actually there's three just like this. 
this photometer has three broadband filters, so it will take images at three different infrared wavelengths, whereas the spectrometer gives us this ugly, smeared looking image. But it's really interesting because each of these smears correspond to a single spectra of an astronomical source, a star or a galaxy corresponding to the photometry images. The spectra show the distribution of intensity of light emitted by an object across the range of wavelengths. And to do this, Euclid uses a grating prism to disperse the light. Just like a prism, this splits white light into a rainbow. The grism is made up of a series of parallel grooves that are actually etched onto a piece of silicon. And when the light passes through these grooves, it's diffracted or spread out into a spectrum. The different wavelengths of light are diffracted by different amounts, so the spectrum is spread out into a smear. And then the intensity of the smear at different points can then be converted into the spectra that we're more familiar with. Spectra have characteristic shapes with peaks and dips that allow astronomers to identify what the astronomical source is made out of, and then the elements that are present, as well as the temperature, the density of the object, and it can also tell you the redshift of an object, so its distance, and even tell you about the velocity by making use of the Doppler effect of an object. In my opinion, this makes spectra the holy grail of astronomy. You can learn so much from them, but they are really hard to extract. They require a lot of time, and as you can see, it can be hard to disentangle which spectra belongs to which galaxy. They're all kind of merged together. And that's why we also have the photometry. The photometry are much more efficient to obtain. The three photometry measurements correspond to three points or regions in a typical spectra. And then a library of templates of spectra are used to figure out what the spectra should actually look like. And then just like the spectrometer, we can get the distances of galaxies and more. Albeit it wouldn't be as accurate as what you would be measuring with the actual spectra. Each of these images will be more than 70 times larger than those captured by the Hubble Space Telescope. And it will contain information useful for all fields of astronomical research, not just to measure the distributions of galaxies and dark matter in the universe. It can be used to do time domain research like supernova and asteroid detection. We can learn about galaxies and their evolution. Here we see a face on spiral galaxy and edge on galaxies, and there's just so much more. Euclid's main science is is to accurately measure the shapes and positions of as many galaxies as possible. And with these instruments in place, Euclid no doubt will meet our needs to map the dark universe. Don't forget that these are the early engineering photos, so the future results will be deeper and crisper after processing. The three channels of the NISP images can be stacked together to make pretty colour images of the sky too, so I can't wait for these to come later in the year. What are you most looking forward to for the Euclid mission? That's all for this week's video. Thank you so much to my YouTube Perk subscribers for supporting my videos. If you want to support me and my channel, please consider joining. Otherwise, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.